Thank you. Cheers, mate. Now everyone's going to be thinking about pizza and not listening to me. So that's good. Um, am I going the right way? What's going on? Wrong way. This is backwards. There we go. Cool. This has started well. Uh, cool. So, yeah, as Mike said, uh, creativity. Is there room for creativity in PPC? That's what I'm going to try and answer uh, today. Um, and I'm going to try and cover that on a few points. One of those is data, um, so not looking specifically at creatives, but more at how we utilize data. Moving on to strategy within PPC, and then the current PPC landscape as well. Um, so starting with data, and I couldn't start to talk about data without first bringing up um, the infamous GA4 for a little bit, um, which I'm sure everyone's familiar with. A lot of haters in the room, I'm sure, as well. Um, I like wordplay, if you didn't know this. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, GA4, so speaking about data, GA4, you know, rolled out uh, quite quite a while ago now, you know, over, over 18 months. Um, we had a lot of uh, banners like this saying, complete a GA4 setup, or you're gonna lose your data. I think, safe to say, most people ignored those banners uh, and these tickers that were coming through. It got quite intense, getting emails. We even got banners within the Google Ads platform. To be honest, I was half expecting this guy to show up and start telling me to, to start on my GA4 as well. Um, I have three kids, so there's a lot of characters and Disney and stuff like that, so get used to that. Um, but yeah, the thing I'm trying to say with data is that the data that's going into GA4, even though people might not like the platform, is still data that is valuable uh, and you need to get used to, to using it and how you analyze that data. And I just wanted to go through a few changes with GA4 that have happened recently. So one of those is uh, event measurement uh, on GA4. So um, it now you can now revert your conversion measurement back to the way that Universal Analytics uh, does now. So. Um, a lot of that's going to keep happening, I think, within GA4 as people request features that came with the uh, the sunset uh, and as they, they mourn universal analytics. Uh, another one is you can adjust conversion credit between paid and organic. So using that data to see where which channels are, are contributing to your, your activity. So much more uh, valuable data based on where you want that actions, where you want those actions to be happening. And there's been a whole host of dimension and metric updates within the platform as well not only on how you can utilize those, but um, how you can report on those in things like Looker and, and BigQuery and, and the Google Analytics API. So a lot more rich data coming from this particular platform. Um, and as a result of being forced to do a GA4 webinar for our client, um, I've learned a lot more about GA4 and I'm sort of becoming a bit of an advocate for it now. So um, I would em em implore everybody to you know, start using it uh, a little bit more. Uh, but moving on from there, back onto PPC. Um, so a lot of the time people say that PPC is just keyword research, it's bidding on those keywords, it's some copywriting, and then that you know famous buzzword of optimization across, across PPC. Well, it's not just about that. Um, it's about a lot more than that. And sometimes you've got to step away from those best practices uh, and move on to more creative thinking when it comes to PPC and how you approach it. So just looking at some specific statistics around PPC, which if you've worked in marketing, you'll probably recognize some of these already. So um, 7 million, so that's advertisers on Google. So a huge pool of advertisers that you're up against on PPC. 5.2 billion is online users, and Google operates about an 86% market share of those, so a significant portion of the market on Google. And then four to 10,000 ads served per user per day on average, depending on what case study you read uh, on that day. So that's a huge bank of content that's out there, a lot of ads that are, that are ongoing. So you need to start to use the data that's coming out of those and that you're inputting alongside strategy and then use creativity to make that data and strategy stick. So you need to know your customer, essentially and know the data that you've got available to you. So data, um, I like this sort of meaning from data as it shows that no matter what your data is, good or bad, 
it's it's data that you're using for your decision making processes. Um, so it could be things that are facts or assumed, but either way, you're going to use that data to decide what to do next within your strategy or with your creatives. So you need to try and understand that data and try and interpret it as best as you can. I've got quite a loose analogy uh, on this, uh, and you'll see why in a second, but it's all around input and output of data. So when Mike asked me to see if I wanted to speak at Power Hour 7, this was about three months ago, I think, I knew that I had three months to prepare a deck for, for this. So the information I had was time. That is my, my data for, for getting this deck together. I was quite happy with that. I knew I could get a deck done in far more, uh, less time than that, uh, far less time than that. Um, and I knew that, you know, three months was the, the amount of time that I had. So the only thing I didn't consider were other variables, so like my actual job um, or a GA4 webinar that I had to run, things like that. So basically what it resulted in was not a breakdown, uh, that's wrong, um, but a breakdown of the data. So looking at all those other variables and that time that I had, it turns out in actual fact, I probably had about two hours last night and a bottle of wine to do this deck. So um, then it ends up with stuff like this. So basically that data point that I had, that information that I had, I didn't interpret that as best as it could be. I knew that it was facts. It was a data point that I had, but it's not, I didn't use it to the best of its ability. I didn't break it down. I didn't segment it into where it needed to go and to use that data to create a, a better deck. So, like I said, a really loose analogy for that one. Um, so just a sort of mini case study on how we've used data creatively with one of our clients. Um, so we have an e-commerce client that have, um, sorry, e-commerce and retail client. Uh, they have about 200 stores in the UK, a really diverse product range. And they came to us with a challenge of identifying a true return on ad spend, both online and in store. Obviously, we were already delivering a return on ad spend, but they wanted it to be as accurate as possible, taking into account all spends and taxes uh, across everything. So basically, due to the nature of their company, they can't claim back VAT and certain taxes. So we need to account for all that, as well as all, all of our fees and everything. The rest of the challenge was we didn't have any visibility of their organic footfall in store. It's something that they'd never really looked at or optimized to. So we need to think of a, a, a solution to get around that. We had access to Google store visit data, but the client had concerns around the accuracy of this data and you know how much, um, how much they could rely on that in terms of return ad spend when it comes to store visits. And data accuracy as a whole was a must for them to try and get this true return on ad spend. So the solution was pretty simple for accounting for all spends and taxes. We could just use custom columns and calculations, some fancy look of studio reports and things like that. That was fairly simple to overcome. What we did implement in terms of the organic footfall piece was a store clicker test. So literally giving clickers to individuals in some of their best performing stores and they would count how many people walked in that weren't collecting or a pre-planned uh, appointment, and then how many of those converted. So it gave us a walk-in conversion rate based on you know star, uh, star visits over a 30-day period. We then queried all the star visit data that we get from Google, giving some decent visualizations on that data to see, see if that correlated with the star visit data that we've tracked both on the clickers, but also with their data warehouse team and we collaborated with them to make sure that we could get the richest data possible out of both their online transactions and in-store transactions. Now, it was quite a long testing piece, but what we actually came out of it with was a profit on ad spend in the end, rather than a return on ad spend. Using all that rich data that they have in-house, as well as the store visit testing that we did, the reporting, all the visualizations, we were able to use all of that data, upload it into our accounts, but only upload profit. So we've got margin across a really diverse product range. We've got uh, uh, insights into, or their first real insights into conversion rate in store, as well as average transaction value, but also average profit value from somebody walking into their stores. 
and then we worked with the data warehouse team to ensure that all of the store visit data that we were tracking and all the revenue we were uploading into the account was discounted in, in the right way to show us the uh, biggest accuracy possible for that data going back into the account. As a result from store visits, we can see the impacts of that. So we've got that business as usual uh, to begin with in the terms of their seasonality. We've got some initial optimizations and testing phases. And then since rolling this out fully over the past couple of months, you can see that their store visits are just skyrocketing within the account. And that all came from utilizing data in the best way, both data that the client had, but also data that we were gathering from our activity. Okay, so moving on to strategy. Um, so PPC has, has got a, a, a whole host of basic tasks that we can get through. So things like segmenting your audience, general optimizations, there's up buzzword again, set square reporting, A-B testing, budget planning. These are all things that are pretty evergreen within an account. But the thing you have to remember is that the landscape's always changing. So platforms are evolving. We've got a whole host of new features coming, coming into platforms every week, it seems. Companies grow, consumer behavior shifts. You know, we've got a, a whole host of changes that are happening all the time. And there's a lot of challenges to overcome from platforms like Apple, Google, Facebook. Um, and the only real constant, I suppose, is, is change. Um, so we need to sort of account for that within strategies as well, because strategy isn't evergreen. You need to revisit that as often as you can. Next one. Um, so you've got to be in a position to, to, to level up your strategy. You've got to be primed to do that. And moving from the early stages of optimizations and those best practices into a strategy-focused activity is the fun part, right? So getting out of those day-to-day -day optimizations and, and moving on is, is key. And this year is going to be peak automation, really. You know, it's really gained some traction over the last few years in terms of automation. And that's really going to hit its peak and ultimately give us less control. But that automation is also going to take a lot of the legwork away from us. And it's going to change our role as an advertiser from executional into more strategy focused. So we need to think about moving from these micro actions that we probably used to do in accounts 10 years ago but into more of a macro view in terms of, you know, much um, less frequent actions in the account, but those actions are having much more of a bigger impact. And in terms of on, onboarding, you've got to be strategic in your approach from, from day one. So looking at your process in terms of strategy is, is paramount to starting from, from, from a good point, starting with a good foundation. So you need to identify the goals with whoever the, whoever's involved in, in the strategy. Make sure it's collaborative, both internally and with the client, if it is with the client. You need total transparency of that process. It's all about managing expectations in terms of what's going to be happening within the account, why we're making certain decisions. And you've also got to be able to step out of your comfort zone, but also make others step out of theirs. You've got to be fairly bold in terms of the strategy that you're going to adopt or the processes that you're going to take. And that could be, you know, both the guys have spoken about, you know, multi funnel strategies and things like that. Um, but talking about this sort of long-term strategy from day one is key, really. You may not implement it all straight away, but at least it's on the table in the beginning and then you've sort of set expectations for the future. So being innovative from day one uh, is key. Um, looking from the top, so testing, buying, one of the biggest obstacles to innovation within PPC is agreeing and sticking to testing timelines and, and a testing framework. So more often than not, testing will be aborted far too quickly before it's had a chance to, to run. So testing needs a clear expectation and, and buying from a strategic point of view. You need to give clear, uh, clear reasons as to why this testing is happening. And you need to make sure that everybody knows what's going to happen with this test. And you know, if, it, if it looks like it's failing, but what the immediate outcome is. At the end of the day, a test is always going to give you that data. Whether it's right or wrong, it's going to give you a decision to make. You've also got a budget for wild ideas. So as PPCs or as marketers, we're sort of hardwired to eliminate inefficiencies and wasted spend. So 
you've got to account for a degree of wasted spend, really, and have budget for these wilder ideas to implement things like this testing, implement bolder strategies, challenge the status quo a little bit more, and, and try new things. Which is, you know, what we're all saying really creatively today is trying to stand out and, and be a little bit different, and that goes, goes for the same when it comes to account structures within within PPC. And over document everything, just goes without saying that having a paper trail of anything uh, is key to make sure that everyone understands why decisions are being made, where the activity is going, um, and and why you've got these things like wasted budget caps and, and things like that. And the key is really to make sure that there's full transparency for everyone from day one and make sure that you've got a plan, a strategic plan that's, that's creative and that everyone's on board with. Um, so just a little a note on one of our other clients, another e-commerce client, um, their recent attitude to, to stock levels. So um, they have a really, really diverse product range again, um, but the lead time on these products is much, much longer. It's not like a fast fashion or anything like that. Um, but they have some some stock, well not stock issues, but you know a lot of products that come in and out of stock. Now, a lot of the time, advertisers will pull the activity for st stock that's um, products that are out of stock. Um, whereas the attitude with this client is that they continue to advertise. Obviously, shopping, we know that that's just going to drop out of the ad network anyway. But from a search point of view, having dedicated activity for out of stock um, products means that you're still capturing those users onto site. And as long as you're delivering clear messages in copy and in landing pages and gives you an opportunity to still capture that user, potentially capture first party data that you can use later down the line for remarketing. But it's an overall strategy that's focused on lifetime value. So considering that data that's coming in, making sure that you're still capturing that data and then remarketing to that data later down the line. There's a really good attitude to have when it comes to, to stock and still grabbing that data that you can use from a longer term strategy. So onto uh, the PPC landscape, or the current landscape. Um, so just a few points uh, within PPC, what's going on, um, and some tips, I suppose, when it comes to ad creatives. So AI, AI is obviously huge at the minute, a uh, big, big talking point. Um, and it's one that you can't really fight against. So you and AI um, is, is a battle that will be going back and forth and one that you're really not not going to win, to be fair. AI is at the, the heart of a lot of Google's decisions, and it's really powering uh, a lot of creative at the moment. So it needs to be uh, seriously considered. Um, creative focused, um, there's no such thing as too much creative, which I completely agree with. You need enough creative to make sure that you're covering all types of ads, all types of aspect ratios, all types of networks, types of funnels, audiences, wherever that's going. You need to make sure that you, you've got enough creative to cover Cover all your bases, essentially. You can never have too much. And the more that you have, the more you can give to machine learning. The more it can learn from that creative, the more it can test it for you, the more that it can, uh, the more options it has to deliver the right creative to the right users. So you just need to make sure you've got enough in there. And then leveling up your testing. Um, so you need to look at, we've spoken about buying for testing, but you need to make sure that the testing that you're doing is actually valuable and not just these sort of micro tests between, you know, I don't know, ad copy variations or CTAs, but something a bit more in depth. So it sort of invokes a bit of a rethink when it comes to the creative process. Um, so machine learning has really got a handle on serving the right creative or the right ad to the right user at the right time, as long as you know you've got a, a decent structure in there. So you need to make sure that you've got creative that covers all those bases. You need to feed that machine, like we said, um, with, with a bank of creatives for specific uh, audiences or funnels. And also consider attention spans. So we see quite good performance from six second videos, you know, with the boom of TikTok and YouTube Shorts and other platforms and the like. So you need to consider those short attention spans and make sure that you're including brand, you know, within the first few seconds of, uh, of a creative. Make sure you're getting your CTAs in nice and early. Uh, and making sure that you're just holding on to those those people when you've got such a limited limited time frame, and then actionable testing. So we need to sort of formalise A/B testing um, to to monitor major shifts. You know, it's not about those micro tests, but about those big tests to try and get the most out of those. 
Okay, so a little bit on the machine learning. Um, so as PPCs, you know, we're, we're super process oriented. Um, generally, you know, we have a suite of in-house tools uh, to, to help us with that, uh, that we've built. The one on the right is a, a, an ad generator that we have in-house, which you can download for free off our website if you want it. Um, yep, thank you. Um, uh, and these are all tried and tested. I thought that's a tired and tested then. <laughs> that's just me. Uh, tried and tested uh, tools that we, that we have in and they really uh, help with the machine learning process because it gives us the tools to, to give the machine uh, what it needs to get the most out of the algorithm. The more data that you give the machine, the algorithm, the quicker it's going to learn, the quicker it's going to make the most of that budget and the quicker that you can start getting to an optimizing phase. So machine learning really needs to be taken on board. It has its place, but there's an element of control that you still need to have with that. As we all know, robots can get it wrong a lot of the time. So keeping a tight leash on machine learning is, is also key. And then testing again. So just being, and I spoke about testing a lot, but it's super important. You've got to be really creative with the testing that you're doing. A lot of the time, machine learning will take control of specific testing, You know, whether that's rotating creatives or trying out different um, call to actions. There's a whole um, suite of stuff within Google's and recent Google Market and Live updates in terms of um, ad types and campaign types and the Google Ad Studio, you know, that are very creative focused uh, and giving the creative assets into these uh, campaigns and, and, and tools is going to let the machine test those little things for you. So you really need to get into more of a creative process when it comes to testing. So whether that's testing specific landing pages or test, testing different strategies like competitor bidding, which is always fun to do, something a bit more bigger that, that gives you um, a, a major shift in your activity. It removes the guesswork um, out of testing general and removes the guesswork out of certain things. So if you've got obstacles that you're trying to overcome, then you can use um, A-B testing to, to, to fix that and figure it out. And just be bold with, with what you're doing. Don't be afraid to you know, recommend a test or start a test, um, even if you're unsure if it's going to work or not. One of the things that 43 really push within the company is don't be afraid to fail. You know, if, you, if you're going to fail, just learn from it and don't do it again, basically. So just be bold uh, and, and get that testing in place. And last bit on machine learning, um, just a few sort of predictions, I guess, that we're probably going to see from machine learning and then why it's so important to get your creative right and the way that you manipulate your data and your strategy. It's going to increase competition and ultimately, ultimately costs. Because machine learning is doing a lot of the legwork, it's going to free up a lot of time for us as advertisers to focus on that bigger stuff. So it's going to make the market so much more competitive than it already is. Targeting is going to improve generally. Um, so you're going to see optimizations across that. But then every other advertiser is going to have that as well. So you're going to have to think differently. Ad copy is going to improve. You're going to get enhanced ad copy across that. Enhanced creatives. And you're going to see higher efficiency from all of that activity as well. So again, you need to make sure that your strategy and your approach takes this into account because where that innovation comes in is exactly that. You know, you need to think outside of the box with everything because all of this exciting stuff is available to everyone. So it doesn't make you stand out. You can also do that yourself from a strategic point of view. So is there room for creativity in PPC? There is, but you just need to make the room. You've got your data. You need to think of more strategies and then harness your creative as best you can. And that's pretty much it. So thank you.